Alrighty, <clears throat> so this is uh, this way the people news, okay? I may or may not give my opinion, but it's not legal advice, so do not take it as such. I'm going to try to make this short and sweet because these are long videos. This is actually part six of Listen to the Judge, okay? Um, let's go ahead and proceed forward, but do understand whatever my opinions are is just my opinion. This is a learning video, okay? It's for educational purposes only, how the courts operate, especially when you operate uh, representing yourself, that is going to be totally different than having an attorney. We are back on the record. This is 21 Sierra 4840. We are here for the sentencing for Christopher Anderson. Let me start with appearances for the people. Jen Freeburg for the people. Okay, thank you. And then, do I have Mr. Anderson? Uh, you have Christopher. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Mr. Anderson. And then, uh, let's see, I have the victim and advocate. And so, uh, for the sentencing, I will note that there is a uh, conviction. It's only for a level two misdemeanor. Let me just make a quick record on that. Bear with me for one second. And I will note that Mr. Anderson has permission to appear by WebEx today. The uh, conviction uh, was entered on October 12th of 2022. Following a jury trial where Mr. Anderson was acquitted of the level three burglary, level three felony burglary. Uh, and then the people have dismissed and the court has dismissed the trespass claim, which was a level five felony. And the count, uh, the level two misdemeanor uh, count is count four for violation of a protection order. And I believe we, oh, during the trial, the people also dismissed count three, which was for uh, obstructing a peace officer. Yes. So the only sentence today is on count four, violation of a protection order, which is the only conviction level two misdemeanor under CRS 186803.5, 1A. And I will start with the people. Ms. Freeburn? Your Honor, I believe Ms. Howell also wants to make a statement for the court. Okay. The people are asking for two years of supervised probation with whatever screens and treatment probation thinks is appropriate. Um, we are also asking that the protection order stay in place during that time. Okay. And no additional jail. Our office is not seeking any additional jail. Okay. Ms. Powell, is there anything you wanted to tell me? Uh, before we start, I'd like to object to having a statement done by um, the alleged victim. As, again, she was not in the state. She is not party to the matter. And she is not named on the protection order. In fact, the house is the only thing on the protection order. So I don't know and I don't um, acknowledge Ms. Howell's uh being a part of this or even having a say in the matter. Okay, and so um, what about that, that she's not named on the protection order? I'm looking that up. I don't think that's correct. Okay. Do you, can you get me a copy of that? Okay. I think, yeah, I think what he's referring to is that, um, yeah, so I'm looking at the protection order now. Okay, that was... The protection order specifically names within a hundred yards of my house, one four zero eight, which is Willow Lane. Okay, hang on a second, Mr. Uh, Anderson, because I don't have access to the protection order, so I'm just printing. I'm having my clerk print it out for me so I can take a look at it. Okay. Well, I, I see what he's. The question is, why didn't she have access? To the protection order 
if this all has to do within a simple case and being addressed too. Thing, um, as far as that goes, but it also references any witnesses or parties to the case. Obviously, Ms. Howell is a witness to the case. I don't see that she, and, and maybe there's another protection order that I'm, I'm not seeing, the one I'm looking at is from August 31st, 2021. And again, that just lays reference to the house and nobody else. And uh, Ms. Howell cannot be a witness if she was not there. Hang on one second. Oh, wait, it's an amended. Um, let's see, this one is dated August 31st. Oops. 2021. And it's amended. And she, oh, it is amended? Well, let's see, on October 6, 2021, it got amended to add Ms. Howell's name to it. And oh, okay, yes. So that, I'm sorry, that amendment. I mean, she's on the protection order. That amendment was made by you uh, in this court, and that was following my arrest. And so this has nothing to do with the actual original charge, nothing at all. Well, but she is a named victim in this case, sir. Okay, then I challenge the court's jurisdiction on that because she's not in the state of Colorado, nor is she party to the matter. Okay. And there's a signed copy with your signature on it. So, sir, um, I know your objection. I've rescinded all of my signatures. The objection, and she's a victim that's named here with your signed copy of the mandatory protection order. I've already rescinded all of my signatures. And that is under the Victims' Rights Act. Ms. Howell, what would you like to tell me? Um, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to kind of make you have a little bit of understanding about how long that this has been going on with Chris. That, you know, we I filed for divorce over 1,200 days ago. We've been divorced over 900 days. Um, he also has an active warrant for his arrest in the state of Kansas for violation of that man's protection is the one that you just referenced. Um, when I had to go clean out the house, I found lots of like drug paraphernalia and drugs, and I'm still objection. That's speculation. Mr. Anderson, I'm gonna give you a chance to tell me anything you want to tell me, but right now it's her chance to speak, and you just can't. Okay, right there. <clears throat> If it was attorney saying objection, that's the best selection, that attorney says overruled or, you know, go ahead and proceed forward. But because he's not an attorney, she is forcing her will on that man. Uh, so, hypocrisy at the best, right? Um, just recognize that him representing himself is not getting the same treatment as if uh, there was an attorney there. And basically tell him, shut up, let her say whatever she wants to say, even though it's false. You know, he's not allowed to eject, but attorneys can eject five or 6,000 times per court. <laughs> they just say overruled or um, these things, these matters. But in this case, the judge is saying, well, wait a minute, you're not an attorney, so uh, shut up. And interrupt, okay? No, it's not okay. Thank you. And, um, I know that the... Yeah, there you go. Do not interrupt. Well, wait a minute. You, you wouldn't say that to an attorney. You would say overruled. Information wasn't presented to you in the court. However, I've lost the proof of lots of, lots of pipes and other things. And... One of the hardest things is knowing that my child, our child, was there just a few weeks prior to him being in that house. And as we know, he objection. None of this is relevant okay. to a protection order. Mr. Anderson, I, as I said, you're going to have to remain silent until Miss Howell is finished. Okay, or I'll have to. He has to remain silent. But if there was an attorney there and put an objection. Objection overruled. She's just basically saying, hey, look, I'm the judge, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to bow down uh, to me. You need to shut up and let her speak her mind. 
Well, no, she's supposed to be a witness, and there's supposed to be objections, and she's supposed to say overruled or proceed forward. You, I'm going to hear from her, and you get to tell me anything you want to tell me. That's okay? right. It's being recorded, so. Yeah, it's being recorded. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Howell? Thank you. And um, I also just wanted to say that, like, he's just using the judicial system in every way that he can to continuously harass me, anybody who has any interest and in, has helped me throughout this process. He also harasses the court. And I'm just, it has been a very long and tiring ordeal with him. And I just wish that whatever his sentencing is provides him that the help that he needs and that we can all move forward. And it's just been really hard having to bite my cheek and just listen to him abuse me through the, well, not so much recently, but not. We're going to pause there for a second, right? She's in using the courts and all. That's what the courts are for. <laughs> As for his benefit. She's using the courts for her benefit. That's what the courts are there for. <laughs> to just email and to the end of filing this court proceeding. And I don't know if I really have much more to say. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Helen. You know I don't have any jurisdiction over your domestic matters. Yes, I know. Okay. Okay, now, Mr. Anderson, this is your time to tell me anything you'd like to tell me. Um, well, for starters, it's hearsay um, for anything that she had to say about some alleged pipes or mar uh, marijuana paraphernalia in a state where that's legal, first off. Secondly, um, she has a protection order, which she just stated was your protection order issued in the state of Colorado that she has frivolously attacked me on the state of Kansas, who issued orders against me which is a violation of federal law because neither you nor the state of Kansas's court has jurisdiction intrastate in which you... All right, so this has been long enough, and we'll get back to it on part six or seven. <laughs> All right, bye, y'all.